We know that our cells have compartments and structures called organelles, such as the nucleus, the mitochondria, the endoplasmic reticulum, and the Golgi. We also have ribosomes in our cells that can build new proteins. So when we look at the nucleus, we see our DNA in there. We know DNA is a double strand of complementary nucleotides. We also know that we can copy that information of DNA into a complementary mRNA or messenger RNA. The only difference is that mRNA is single-stranded and thymine has been replaced with uracil. Once constructed, the mRNA can then leave the nucleus, taking that information from our genetic code to the ribosomes. The ribosomes can then use that information to construct a specific amino acid sequence. And of course, that builds a protein. In this case, we're actually building a protein that we want to traffic to our cell membrane. So it's constructed and assembled associated with the ER, and then trafficked to the Golgi, and from the Golgi onto the cell membrane. So in this case, I wanted to build a specific membrane protein that we call the sodium-potassium ATPase pump. If you wanted to build a, an intracellular protein, you could just build them in the ribosomes without the ER and without the Golgi. So remember, the process of transcription is creating mRNA. Translation is actually the production of a protein using the information from the mRNA. The pump, sometimes called just the pump, is actually the sodium potassium ATPase pump. It's actually a couple of proteins uh, stuck together, but one of the proteins, uh, the gene is located on chromosome number one. So if you wanted to build that sodium potassium ATPase pump protein, you'd have to locate the ATPA1 gene on your chromosome number one, and then of course uh, transcribe through transcription that that sequence into mRNA. Once built, this protein is usually located in your cell membrane or your plasma membrane. We know we have other proteins in our membrane such as the potassium channels. Potassium channels let potassium diffuse out of the cell. Sodium channels, when they open, allow sodium to diffuse into your cells and change the charge inside your cell. So we need this sodium potassium ATPase pump in order to push sodium out of the cell against diffusion and push potassium into the cell against diffusion. This requires the use of ATP. If you're wondering where all that ATP comes from, well some of it's going to come from oxygen uh, and your mitochondria uh, making ATP. You can make some ATP a small amount just by converting glucose to pyruvate. But that's not usually enough ATP for most cells. So pyruvate and fatty acids and oxygen go into the mitochondria, producing lots of ATP, along with CO2 gas and also heat. Once that ATP is made, your cell's proteins can use it to do useful things, like work the pump. If you ever run out of oxygen, you can imagine there would be trouble. You wouldn't be able to produce as much ATP. Your pumps wouldn't be able to function. In that case, sodium would diffuse into the cells, and it would be hard or difficult to pump or push the sodium back out. Other ions can build up like calcium. That will make your cell very unhappy. You might even have osmotic attraction of water into the cell, causing them to swell up. And in some cases, uh, the water, the swelling, and the calcium buildup can cause the cells to die. Just to summarize some of what we learned, of course, DNA is the information about our protein sequences. Ribosomes take that information in the form of mRNA and, and are able to build proteins and assemble proteins. The ER and Golgi can be used to traffic, well, to assemble, but also traffic uh, those proteins to the proper place in the membrane or the organelles. In this case, we made a functional protein. Uh, functional proteins can be pumps or enzymes, receptors. We looked at pumps and channels. Also, some proteins will just be structural, such as collagen, which is a famous structural protein outside your cells. On the inside of the cells, we have structural proteins too. You may have heard of actin or keratin, which are part of your cytoskeleton. So proteins are the stru structural and functional molecules that keep your cell functioning. Uh, that's it. I'll see you guys.